and UNC allowing themselves to get dragged into the muck by UVA and living to tell the tale. They needed Cormac Ryan to be their best offensive player. No disrespect to Cormac Ryan, but the best thing he does is pest, which is an effective role. He's got he's mm-hmm. a starter at the University of North Carolina. Shouldn't talk down on that, right? You're, you start in basketball, the University of North Carolina, you're doing something right. But I don't think they went into that game saying, yeah, I know how it's going to go. I know, listen, if UNC has their way, uh, R.J. Davis won't be able to hit a three. He'll go like one for seven, one for nine. Armando Baycott and Harrison Ingram are going to combine for 17 points on 13 shots. But Cormac Ryan's going to go six for 11 from three, and they should be able to win against a really good defensive team. That wasn't the plan. That's a win, though. That's a win. They allowed themselves to get dragged into a UVA game against UVA, somehow survived. Not many live to tell the tale. Not many go into Charlottesville and go, you know what? Let's let's play a slow pace here and 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 live to tell. Because most of the time, if UVA gets you into that game, they're just more comfortable in it. Right? You you know it's 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 boxing. Right, if you're the guy that sticks and moves, if you're the guy that that dances and uh, plays defense, and then all of a sudden you get caught into a hey, let's stand in the middle of the ring and slug it out. Chances are the guy that you're boxing against is more comfortable slugging it out. So if you're if you're gonna play their game, that's by their choice. Here's Hubert Davis, their head coach, on the mentality and approach for uh, UNC going into Charlottesville. Going into this game, you know, one of the things that we consistently said to each other is is whatever it takes, you know, on both ends of the floor. You know, whether it's, you know, whatever it takes to get through the screen, to box out, to rebound, to talk on defense, to dive on loose balls, offensively, whatever it takes to come off those screens, to post up hard, to get second chance opportunities, to knock down open jumpers, to get to the free throw line, whatever it takes. And so, um, you know, I think I mentioned it before, you know, we've been in games like this where, um, you know, you just had to find ways to be able to win. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Just find a way. Simple as that. If I'm UVA, this is kind of a backfire of what I think their plan was. I think they probably went into the game – you know, it's it's the Belichick, right? It's been said about Bill Belichick so many times. He takes away what you do best, and if you beat him with your third option, he's just going to put his palms in the air and go like, well, you know, you beat us with your third option, that's pretty good. right? He's going to try to make adjustments along the way to stop it, but, you know, if you play a team that's number one in rushing and your quarterback throws for 400 yards, averages 175, it's going to be like, wow, didn't think they had that. Tony Bennett probably went into the game going, if we bottle up R.J. Davis, if we don't give up anything easy to the the, the two studs who are 6'7", 6'8", or above, meaning Armando Baycott and Harrison Ingram, if those three don't beat us, I like our chances. And then they got 18 points from Cormac Ryan. Right, The scouting report might have even said, like, hey, if anyone's going to get the open shot, this guy, right, can't be R.J. Davis. He's going to be the ACC Player of the Year, uh, although UVA is probably saying it should be Reese Beekman, uh, but a little biased when you're inside that locker room. Uh, it can't be Armando Baycott. We've seen what he's been doing the last six weeks. Can't be Harrison Ingram. He's the amorphous blob. I think that's caught on, and everybody calls him that across the ACC now. It's on T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> and then and then there's Cormac Ryan. There's – uh, you know, Cadeau. Cadeau, who didn't have a good game. There's or scoring the ball. There's uh, Washington. There's Withers. There's Trimble. There's all these other guys that on the, on the scouting report just aren't going to be as featured. And if they beat you, you're kind of okay with it. From UNC's perspective, that's a that's a confidence builder. Hey, if somebody sells out to stop R.J. Davis, Armando Baycott, and Harrison Ingram, Cormac Ryan is ready. Right? It's the 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 great mic'd up between Michael Jordan and and Steve Kerr right before Steve Kerr hits the game winner in an NBA Finals game, uh, Steve Kerr tells the story better than anybody. But you know Michael Jordan is covering his mouth with a Gatorade cup, and he's saying to Steve Kerr like, "Hey, if they double me coming around, be ready, I'll hit you." And Steve Kerr, having absolutely no street sense, looks at him, doesn't cover his mouth at all, and goes, if they double you, I'll be ready. As if (laughs) anyone is looking over there is going to know exactly what's going on. But they doubled Jordan. He made the pass. 
Steve Kerr knocked it down. I'm not saying anybody on the court is Jordan. I'm not saying anybody on the court is Steve Kerr. But I am saying if there's a game where it's like, hey, if they sell out to stop R.J. Davis and Baycott, Cormac Ryan, you might have to be ready. And he's looking at him mouth mouth wide. If they double you, I'll be ready. (laughs) That's good for UNC. It's good for uh, the rest of the team to see that. It's good for Hubert Davis to see that. And quite frankly, it's good for Cormac Ryan to see that. Here's Cormac Ryan on what led to such a big day for him. It's a credit to kind of the way we played and prepared. Um, We did a good job putting them in rotations. And I was a a beneficiary of a lot of open looks, and I knocked them down. And that's the trust that this team has in me and um, that I have in them. And that goes both ways. And I think the biggest part of that was defensively. We were getting stops and a lot of stops. And we held them to, you know, under 30% shooting, I think it was. And that's pretty good on the road against a good team, you know. And so... That's uh, we we uh, we we wanted to do it and we did it. It's a great job by Cormac Ryan there. I've been in that very very exact position that Cormac Ryan is in. Uh, every single time, and I played football in college, but every single time I had a big big passing day, it was because the defense was selling out to stop our run game. Mm-hmm. Right? It was we had an all American running back. Uh, we had a, an offensive line with multiple all Americans on it. I was not foolish enough to think I was out there throwing for for three plus uh, because I was beating like you know eight guys in coverage. It was because they were selling out to stop the run, and I had easy play action. And in the post game, that's exactly what I would say. Uh, our passing game is in a, a tribute to our running game. That was Cormac Ryan right there. I had a lot of easy looks. I knocked them down. Don't get me wrong. Confident in my ability, still had to hit had, them. Had to make the <laughs> shot, but I had a lot of easy looks, and and that's a tribute to the team. I don't. I don't think this was a UNC style victory. Mm. I don't. I don't think this was a UNC designed victory. But it is one of those games. All right, take out a couple words. I do think it was a victory. Hey, victory is victory. I even messaged you during the game mm-hmm. or after the game. I said, Vir- or UNC beat Virginia at their game. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, you know what? You want to play that slow, muck it up a little bit, tight defense. Okay, we're gonna play better defense than you, and we're going to have the guy that you're going to leave open, he's going to hit the shots. Simple as that. Like, we beat you on your court playing the way that you wanted to play. I will give you, I think UNC's defense mm-hmm. was much more comfortable in like a like a, a challenge way of, oh, you want to play like this? Cool. Because we talked about it on Friday. What UVA does is they force your efficiency to matter more because there's less possessions. So every possession has to matter. UNC, I, their defense, which is which is where I'll agree with Dennis, was very much like, all right, you're going to have less possessions for both teams. We're going to challenge your efficiency the same way you're trying to challenge our efficiency. And and UVA just didn't have the kind of the surprise 18 points from from a role player that that got him over the hump. I would tonight they play Miami, and we're going to talk about this later on. Uh, UNC plays Miami. I would I would like to see them have a more UNC victory, meaning a UNC style game play more along their way. I don't want them to get used to, hey, we'll we'll do whatever you want to do, right? We'll play whatever game you want to play. What are the house rules here? I don't want to get to that. I would much rather they, you know, write off Charlottesville. I, I think we called it a fun 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 house mirror haunted house or something like that on friday i think so yeah going into charlottesville it is kind of like the the land of the lotus eaters where everything just is different there once you get out of charlottesville i do think you want to get back to playing your game tonight against miami which is a challenge because miami is one of those teams that maybe hasn't had the production but they have some some beasts down there and they think they've lost six straight yeah they're they're haven't had the production that they like but you can't exactly write them off they they had some postseason success in in recent times with a few of their players. Obviously, a lot missing as well. 